just for you and I can have the right to eternal life. That means eternal overload in your life, eternal blessings in your life, eternal wealth in your life. Come on, somebody start shouting because when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, some of y'all looking too cute today. He gave you all that cuteness and more. I need you to glorify him. Let's lift up holy hands. Let's stand to our feet and begin to give him our adoration. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in this place, Hosanna. You're welcome in this place, Yahweh. Let that be shed Come on, say he's welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let's put some weight on our words and begin to bless God. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Open up your mouth and rejoice. Oh, yes. We thank you, oh, Father God. Let's bless his people. We thank you, oh, Father God. Let's saturate this place with his presence. Let's saturate this place with his adoration. Let's give him what is due on today. This is the day where the stone rolled away. All those problems rolled away. All those pains rolled away. He overcame sin and death and hell on today. And in three days, come on, you got to rejoice in it. In three days, he performed the ultimate miracle. In three days, he rose with all power. My God rose with all power. The King of Kings rose with all power. Power to overcome. Power to deliver. We believe in that same great name. We believe in that same supernatural power that's going to work over time on my behalf and your behalf on today. Because he lives forever. He lives in our hearts forever. He lives in our souls forever. He's working out every situation forever. Your truth shall be revealed today. Your promises shall be revealed today. Somebody's got to get excited. Because my Jesus, the J-E-S-U-X, the Son of Man. Woo! Jesus. Jesus, reveal your face. Jesus, reveal your voice. Jesus, reveal yourself to every person that's in here, every humble heart. Somebody got to get moving and shaking in here. Come on and lift to your left and your right and begin to say, I came to bless the Lord. Say, I came to bless the Savior. Let's move about and greet our neighbor and say, I came to bless the Savior. What about you? I came to bless the Savior. Rejoice. Lift the Savior up. Oh, oh, oh. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Oh. 
today. Come on, somebody got to rejoice. There's got to be something that you've been asking for, something you have been inquiring, one thing that I desire from the Lord, and that I will thirst after, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, yes. If you're not looking for one thing, you should be trying to gain eternal life today. Because Jesus came, bled and died on a cross. He went to Calvary just to save a wretch like you and me. Come on, somebody say the story. They hung him high and they stressed him wide. He hung his head. For you and me, he died. But guess what? That's not how. Come on. The story ends. Because what happened? In three more days. Yes, he did. My God rose again with all power. All power in his hands. Hallelujah. Glory to the name. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the precious Lamb of Jesus. We welcome you here in his presence on today. We magnify your name, oh Father God. We exalt your name. We lift you higher, high above the heavens on today, oh Father God. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to save us all. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ is risen. Come on, say, Christ is risen. Christ has risen from the dead. And so we're going to rejoice in it today. Come on, put your hands together. Let's go. Risen. He's risen forever glorified.
we praise the same power. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands up. Oh, the same power, the same power. Crush the enemy. The same power, the same power, the same power lives in me. Amen. Come on and clap your hands. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Reveal Church Worship Center Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on today. Here at Reveal Church Worship Center, we are a multi-ethnic, intergenerational church. Together, we love God, we love people, we transform families, and we transform communities. Come on, can y'all say that with me? Love God, love people, transform families, transform communities. And just to let you know, uh, uh, let you in on the big surprise, we have a permanent building. Woo! Come on, rejoice. You can do better. Hey, hey, man. Reveal Church has its own church building, one that God has been holding for us in secret. And now he has opened up his treasures of heaven and poured us out a blessing. And so, yes, we will be moving in to our permanent space pretty soon. So you stay tuned, and we'll let you know when that day is to come. Amen. Amen. If you are watching online today, we give a special welcome to you that are watching, and we hope that you experience God on a whole nother level on today while watching on this Easter Sunday. Amen. Do we have any first-time visitors? Amen. Could you stand to your feet? We just want to recognize you, and we want to love on you just a little bit. Come on, give them a hand clap. Amen. We have another guest here today. We are so happy that you decided to uh, worship with us on today. We do not take it lightly. We want to roll out the red carpet for you. And so we want you to stay connected with us. We have these connection cards that we would like for you to uh, 
uh, fill out and return to us on your way out. Just drop it off at the table on your way out. That's our way to just say, uh, give you a good old uh, God bless you and to check up on you and also to invite you to the many other things that we have going on here at Reveal Church Worship Center. Listen, y'all, we are a newly planted church. We are going into our second year of full full uh, speed ahead. Amen. Amen. We are emerging. We are thriving. We are sustaining. And we thank God for that, for leading us into it. So a part of the increase, guess what? We got more ways that you can get involved here at Reveal Church Worship Center. So here are some other ways. We are looking for people to be ushers and hostesses. We are looking for people to be children's ministry servants, to be a part of our hospitality team, to be sign greeters and hostesses, um, to set up and clean up. We are going to need that ministry that can clean that new building as well as keep this one that we are borrowing for a moment, keep it clean as well. We also are looking for a security team and for people to join our outreach team as we begin to ramp up on our different outreach um, events that are coming up soon. We are also looking for people to join our parking lot ministry. Say amen for that because we got to get ready for the overflow. Okay? You, grandmama, and your mama, y'all ain't the only ones that's going to be parking in the parking lot no more. Okay? So we have to get some more gifted people that can show hospitality and tend to those needs that rise up. Y'all y'all know now, we don't need the people that, that are road ragers now. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and say, if you road rage, and you know you get a little out of sorts when you're in traffic, we, we may need your gift somewhere else, okay? But parking lot people, if you can put a smile on your face, you got the, the wisdom of the Lord, the patience of a dove. We need you. We need you for the parking lot ministry. Amen? Amen. So, yes, we want everybody to know that we do have a place here for everybody's creativity, everybody's gifts. We don't want any gift to go uncounted. So, please, sign up today um, on your way out at our hospitality table, and we can get you um, enrolled in one of these ministries. We also have the worship team. We have we, we need singers. We also need more dancers on our dance team. Did they do an awesome job? This is their first Sunday dancing these are our our revealed dancers amen man they did an awesome job today yes so listen um if you would like to be a part of any one of these ministries and you are watching online please put connect me in the comments below and we will reach out to you as soon as we can amen so here are some events that are coming up we are now in the month of april amen now someone help me out we are having a cleanup day um, at, over at our new building, and we are going to need every single person here to help us clean that building. We need uh, some brooms, some mops, cleaning stuff. We uh, need some people that know how to paint. We'll teach you how to paint, but we want to spruce up that building so it is ready um, by the time we move in. What date is that again? April the 12th. April the 12th. That is Friday, April the 12th. We will be going to clean our building. If you would like to, to uh, join us for that cleanup, watch out for the Reveal text messages. It will come through on your phone. If you are not connected with Reveal text group, please sign up at, at the welcome table on your way out. Also on April 12th in the morning, well, April, let me go back. Cleaning day is in the evening. We're starting at 6.30 until, of course, we're done. We'll hope to be done in maybe about two hours or so. Um, but that's going to begin at 6.30. And then earlier in the day, beginning at 12 o'clock, we are going to give back to one of the schools here in Douglasville. Somebody shout amen. Amen. So it's called the big event. We now have a partnership with the University of West Georgia. That's big, y'all. It's big. So, yes, we have a partnership with them, and it's called the Big Event. So this is a community service day where we're partnering with them, and we're going to go over to the charter school. It's a new charter school called Zest Preparatory Academy, and we are going to do a career day. So the college students, along with whoever would like to volunteer, uh, we want to do a career day there on April 12th. So if you want to sign up for that career day, please sign up at the welcome table, and we'll do that there as well. Amen. So now let's do our tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Come on. Hallelujah. I need some offering music. 
Yes, don't do what y'all did to me last week, but I need some offering music. I need some giving music. I need that giving to be resurrected today, okay? That don't sound like no giving music. All right. All right, it's tithes and offering time. Come on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So you, uh oh, wait a minute. Five ways to give. Cash or check to my left or right. Oh. You can do Cash App. Dollar Sign Reveal Church, WC. Dollar Sign W Church. <laughs> They start, they start. But yes, you could do cash app, dollar sign reveal church WC. You could download the church app via app or Android devices. Look for RCWC, RCWC. You can also go to our text for giving option, and that is text give, G I V E, to 833 921 6507. All right, you could go to our website, RC. WCenter.org, look for the giving tab, you can do that as well. And then also, we are still raising funds for our building, and if you want to know where your seed is going to go, we are raising money to get 55 more chairs, and we're looking for a seed for a chair, so if you want to give and you want to know exactly where it's going, sow a seed for a seed, all right? All right, so you're already standing, they got the music going, yeah, all right, we giving, we giving, we giving. All right, let's do the giving affirmation. I give out of obedience, not of fear. I give out of confidence, knowing something is coming. I give out of love for God, knowing his love endures. I give because I know heaven supplies all my needs. I give to partner with heaven's resources. I give to increase the kingdom and reduce hell. I give because I'm expecting God to heal me, deliver me, increase me, shift me, and use me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. Come on and say it with me. Say bless, 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 bless. Come on, put your hands in the air and say this. Wave your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. If it's really, really love the Lord today, somebody say, oh yeah. Cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Let's go. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Say ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Reveal Glory to his name. Come on, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Hey, hallelujah. Amen, amen. The same God that blesses is the same God that is going to cover the earth on today. Amen. Cover the earth, Lord. Hallelujah.
There is an empty grave. So why are we begging? For what he freely gave. Boldly I'm running. The veil has been torn. We're ready, Lord. We've never been beggars. We haven't in for he is our father, and we haven't grabbed it in. We're living your vision to see the earth transform. We're ready, Lord. Let your glory cover the earth. Oh. Let your glory cover the earth. We're ready, Lord. Let your glory cover the earth. Cover the earth. Let your glory cover the earth. We're ready, Lord. Let your glory cover the earth. Cover the earth. Let your glory 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 cover the earth. Let your glory
Give God some praise in this place today. Come on, get on your feet. Come on, this is not an ordinary day that we're here in this place today. We should be rejoicing because he rose on the third day, confirming that he's with us, that he's not going to take us, that he's going to continue to deliver you out of the pits of hell. This is your day of deliverance. This is your day of salvation. This is your new beginning. This is another opportunity for you to get to know Christ, even in the deeper level than you had before. This is not the opportunity to waste this moment. You gotta take what God is giving you today. You gotta get ready to push something new because what he's giving you, it has to be used for the kingdom. Come on, you know it. I decree and declare this thing in the atmosphere. I need to hear your voices. Come on, make us all sound in this place. Come on, worship him for a minute. We got to break some things off. The war got to come forth today. You got to understand that what he's giving you today is going to shift you into another dimension. Mama said, take us sometime. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we must rejoice and be glad in it. He's given us another opportunity at life, and we should be grateful for this opportunity. Today, we worship him in all remembrance of what he's done for us. There's nothing like Jesus when he enters the room. Everything must change. Everything must shift. The blood still heals. I don't know what, what century y'all are living in, but the blood still works. There's something that you need out of him today. But if it's you, you need to let him know right now that, Lord, I need you. I need deliverance. You got to be honest with yourself sometimes. You can't walk around like nothing is wrong with you. But you got to understand that in your submission, that something must change. That in your submission, that the kingdom will fight on your behalf. Today, I just want to talk to you about a couple of things. I don't have long today. But I believe we're in the season that everything that, w that can be shaken will be shaken. We're in the time, just as God was on the cross when he was crucified. There was a quake, an earthquake that shook the earth. Rocks were being split. And that was an indicator, not that this was the end, but this was a new beginning. So what you're getting ready to see in this season that God's going to show you yourself in ways that you've never shown before. But God wants you to know that he's the one and only true living God. His hand is going to sweep around this country 
across this world in ways we've never seen before. It's a season of great harvest, but it's also a season of great exposure. And you're going to realize some things that where you thought you were in the spirit that you really wasn't. But in the midst of it, because his grace is sufficient, he's going to bless you in the midst of this time and this season. You're going to have to fight, but you're going to see God bless you. Say it with me. I'm going to have to fight, but he's going to bless me in the midst. Come on, say it again. With all you got, I'm going to have to fight, but he's going to bless me in the midst. Come on, say it one more time for heaven can hear it. Well, I'm going to have to fight, but he's going to bless me in the midst. I don't think y'all mean that. Say it one more time for me. There's something about when you speak out of the bosom of your soul, you got to believe what you're saying. I'm going to have to fight, but I'm going to be blessed in the midst. Come on, I need my old saints to show you how to do it. Y'all need to shout at the top of your lungs because those, by my call center, despite what the enemy may going to set up before you, but you got to understand that God's going to bless you in the midst of it. Mama said, hey, Santa. Ah, Baba Sita, you can have a seat. Y'all gonna have a seat. I get excited about any time that the Lord is in the room. There's something about the presence of God that shifts the very nature of the confinements that we live in. And I'm grateful today to be in, in front of you guys to, to, to deliver this message. This is like the Super Bowl Sunday of churches. <laughs> This ain't the March Madness, but this is a Super Bowl. And I'm excited to be giving you guys this word today. So if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke, chapter 24, starting at verses 1 through 12. Luke 24, starting at verse 1 through 12. Yeah, the baby got it. She know what's going on. Amen. Amen. If you have it, say amen for me. Oh, let me give y'all a couple more minutes. I ain't here but one voice. Amen, amen. If you got to stand on your feet for me to show homage to God that you respect his word. Amen. Luke 24, starting at verse 1, and then at verse 12. And it says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for living among the dead? Mm. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of the man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified on the third day and raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11. Notice the word, the number 11. I'm going to dive deeper into that for you here in the message. And to all the others, it was Mary Madeline, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. Somebody said with me, God is not ordinary. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, bending over, and he saw the stripes of linen, the strips of linen lying by themselves, wondering to himself what has happened. Today's message, I simply want to talk about, he is not curbside pickup. Hmm. He is not curbside pickup. Y'all can have a seat. If you look at this context here in Luke, this is Jesus being risen from the dead. And many people were baffled about how could someone that died raise themselves up from the dead. And it took a word that the angels was telling them to remind them of what he said before. I say this to you is that in this season, you're going to have to remember the word that God gave you in prior seasons. Many of us, we don't consider what Jesus has said because our situation has clouded our mindset. It has clouded our decisions, our judgment. It has clouded everything about us. 
But I want you to understand that it took two angels, when it should not have taken two angels, to remind them of what God said. God had gave them the word and told them, I'm going to die, but I'm going to raise, be raised on the third day. But many of them, they did not understand the complexity of this. And Jesus was simply telling them that I'm not ordinary. But I want you all to understand, sometimes I feel that people treat Jesus like he's ordinary. Jesus is not an ordinary man. Jesus is three persons. Well, God is three persons that work in different elements. The Father, he sits on the throne in heaven, and he would never leave his throne. But then you have the Son. He rose and died on the what? On the third day. Then you have the Holy Spirit, which is that dwells with us, that convicts us, that gives us directions, that gives us understanding. But see, many of us, we don't understand that, that fathom of how God is. It's because we simply try to make God ordinary, meaning we're trying to receive God in the sense of a physical thing. But God is not a physical thing. God is a spiritual thing. God's spirit came down on earth here in flesh to be able to, for him to see and show himself that, hey, I don't understand why these people are not listening to me. Because if you understand, in the Old Testament, when God gave a word to the prophets, what happened? If the prophets never delivered a word correctly, what happened to them? They would die. But then that was old covenant. Then Jesus come on the scene as an intercessor. And that's when you see the new covenant. The new covenant simply means that Jesus said, I'm going to leave something here with you as he was telling his disciples. Now, what was he talking about in that time? The disciples didn't understand, but they understood after he died. You got to understand that he left us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us into a place of purpose. But many of us are treating the Holy Spirit as if we don't even want him to confide in us. But what we don't understand is that the Holy Spirit dwells within us, even in the times where you think you may do some right. But there's a moment in time where you feel convicted and he's telling you, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Y'all walk with me now. But I want you to understand this theme here. When they came back and when they went to go tell the apostles, the scripture says they told only 11 apostles. But there was 12. So what happened to the other one? This other person was Judas. See, Judas was part of the assignment to get Jesus on the cross. But what many of us don't understand is this. You cannot eliminate your Judases in this season. They will be the people or persons that push you into your purpose. Listen, y'all don't like that because everybody been telling y'all, I got to run away from all my enemies. But the Bible says that he prepares a table of what? Now, that don't sound like he's moving the enemies out of your way. What that sounds like is, baby, some of these enemies you're going to have to deal with. Because some of us have been pushing the people away. Yeah, they got ill intentions. They may be sending monetary spirits around you. They may carry demons. But guess what? Some of your enemies are going to push you to a place of purpose. But because we don't have discernment, we push them away. And they hold the seed to your blessing. But many of us, we just get in an emotional state. And we think that the enemy should be something that we should not confide in. But don't you know in this season, my enemies was the ones that blessed this ministry. Y'all didn't hear that. Did I say that correctly? Listen, in this season, some of the very people that blessed this ministry was my enemies because they saw something different in Rodney in this season. He wasn't just a schoolboy. They said, this boy got a light upon him that I don't understand. Now, in one season, they thought I was just an old boy stuttering around the block. But in this season, hey, I'm proclaiming the word. But sometimes all you got to do is just proclaim the word of God and allow the people to see the light. It's not we, they're looking at your flesh. They're looking at the spirit that's in you. But many of us, we're treating people and pushing them away at the expense that you should be accepting them into your circle. Because some things that they, some of these people may be from the streets, but they got street sense for you can do evangelism. But y'all pushing them away. The Bible didn't tell me that, that only a certain people can enter. He said everybody has an opportunity. Not just the saints, but if you're a devil from hell, baby, come to church. But if you come to church, I believe something can shake, something can shift. But we get in our mindsets and we just push these people away. But also you got to remember, the number 11, listen to me prophetically, the number 11 can mean there's a season of transition. And it's so of a doubling of an 11 can signify a season of intense shaking as things transition until it's new. 
Now understand this, when Jesus died, yeah, the world was shaking, but there was a new time and a new season because he was saying that the king has rose and now he got to do what he got to do. But many of us, when we see shaking, we go straight to hell. Lord, I'm for that die. Lord, I need to give up because you didn't tell me that I'm going to have to go through some pain in this season. You didn't tell me that I'm going to have a disease in my body. You didn't tell me that my husband's going to act a fool. You didn't tell me that my wife is going to nag me until my knees went dry. You didn't tell me this. But instead, what happens is you don't understand when things start to come against you, that's a sign that something new is on the way. Something new is on the way. And we got to be able to discern because any time, think about Jesus when he went on that 40-day fast in the wilderness. Guess who tempted him? With the very thing that he needed. But there was a time and in the shift that he was sacrificing for his own people before he died. But many of us, we get confused. And see, the number 11 also means alignment. And so the shaking brings alignment to allow for an awakening and a revival. Listen now. This is the revelation I got of this scripture. See, many of us, we'll see the number 11. We'll roll past that like that don't mean nothing. But every word in the word, it got something about it. But it's up to you to, to get the revelation from the Holy Spirit. But see, this season, God is doing a great awakening so there can be a revival. And see, the enemy has set up and put up these kingdoms within our cities. And, these, and, and us, the church, we're scared to fight against these demons. Let me give you a real, a real testimony. When I first launched this church... We did an outreach event, and we went into these neighborhoods that was low and, had a, and, and they was in a low dissonant place. And it reminded me of my past because I grew up in a trailer park in a single wild trailer sleeping on the floor with 20 of my own cousins. And the Lord started showing me where I came from and where he got ready to take me. But that night, I went for a ride at 10 o'clock at night. My wife looking at me crazy. Boy, what are you leaving my house for at 10 o'clock? Who are you going to see? I said, I'm going to see Jesus. And he told me to get in my truck, and I ran, and I drove down to Arbor Place Mall, and the Lord told me to look up at the top of the roof of Arbor Place Mall. And when I looked up, I saw this huge dragon-looking demon with red eyes. And that, see, that did not concern me. What concerned me was there was no one in this community fighting against it. And we wonder why people still have a poverty mindset, because there's dominions amongst us that we ain't even recognize that we need to be fighting against. But instead, because we don't want to get attacked back, we don't want the backlash of fighting against a demon, we choose not to fight it. But in this season, you're going to have to fight your demons. If you got any addictions, you got to come off of it. If your mind is not sound, you got to come out of it. Because the world tells us, because God said he's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a what? A sound mind. You're going to need a sound mind in this season. Because the enemy ain't fighting fair. But we got to understand that we're in a season of a great transition. And see, right now, the church is here. God is shaking the church just as the earth shook during Jesus' crucifixion. This shaking is to remind the people that God has all power in his hand. But see, God ain't lost the power. He will allow things to be shifted in the moments of time where you feel like that he don't have control of it. And many of us are in this season where everything feels like it's falling apart. But instead, we start speaking against ourselves. And said, Lord, why do you got me in this place? Why everything falling apart? Why my money looking funny? Why everything just not adding up? But instead, you need to be looking at the thing behind the veil. Because the enemy will cloud your judgment by things that you see. But in reality, if you just tap into the spirit for one moment, you will see there's a blessing that's out that you can't understand that is on its way. But see, people, we get in this place and we miss what's really happening. Because I don't judge the nature of my life by what I see in my flesh. But I judge by what God has been revealing to me in the, in the spirit. And see, we got to start having these minds of carnality, but we got to take on the full image of God. That means operating in the fruits of the spirit, to turn like God, understand like God. No matter what you come against, you got to understand that you got to walk yourself through it. And notice, Jesus is not an ordinary God. Think about this in the scripture. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices, right, and they prepared it to go to the tomb. 
If you look up history, when they made spices in our modern day, when people died, they embalmed them to have them not having uh, this, this, this bad smell. But back then, they would have spices. And they would take it into the dead body and start sprinkling the spices over the body so that the smell won't be so bad. But see, in this particular hour, you see Mary, as she's preparing the spices, she don't understand that Jesus was not even there. She's treating Jesus like he's ordinary. As if he was not going to be there in that tomb and already rose up. But I want you to understand this. You cannot, mm, listen to me good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You cannot plan in this season in an ordinary way. Because when you get there, it's going to be something that you didn't prepare for. She was taking spices because she thought the body was still there. But he had rose and already started to bust and move in the earth. But many of us, we treat him like he's ordinary. Think about this. Jesus, little, he lived a life that was catastrophic. But he was, but he's the prince of peace. Think about it. Listen to this good now. He's dying, but he still has life at the same time. He was walking around hungry, but yet he's the wet, the bread of life. Think about this now. He was walking thirsty, but he's the wet, the living water. Mm. He died, but, but yet still alive. He walked around depressed, but he is the mighty counselor. Listen to me good. He's defying all the odds of this physical world. But many of us, we thought because Jesus experienced what we experienced, that Jesus, who Jesus, ta -ta -ba -ko -santa. Mm. we look at Jesus in our own flesh to, under, to try to understand that because what he experienced, that he could not defy the odds. What he went through, his pain, him being catastrophic, it wasn't that he could not get help, but he wanted to be a demonstration of how you should live your life. Because you're going to have to suffer on this earth. You're going to have to suffer beyond understanding. But some of us, if we just look at what Jesus went through for us, we will understand that if he can get through it, I can get through it. Because we miss the love of God. God took his spirit down on earth and put it in a man. He didn't have to do this, but God wanted to understand what it was like to be living in flesh. But we don't look at it that way because God is a spiritual being, but God wanted to say, you know what? I got to send someone down here just to go save their souls at the expense because I want to see them finish the race. But see, we're running this race, but we don't want to finish it because we start serving other idols. We start serving other gods. Money has become the forefront of our life. And we want to serve ourselves. It's because we're run away from the purpose at the expense that you want to stay rich. But you don't understand that the best riches you can have is everlasting life. And see, some of us, we say we want ever, everlasting life, but we don't want to reap the repercussions of it. We don't want to reap the repercussions of it. And see, understand this as well, that eternal death... Mm, it's a real thing. I hate to go this way with y'all today, but the Lord put this on my heart. Eternal death is a real thing. Eternity has no end. See, we always talk about eternity in heaven, but we don't never talk about eternity in hell. Let me help y'all out here now. Matthew 7, 13 through 14 says this. Enter through the, wet, the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to wet destruction. Many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few will find it. This is a revelation I got in this scripture. It says, we must decide whether we are willing to risk earthly possessions for eternal gain. The righteous will only enter the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians says this, doers, those who commit sexual immortality, Adulterers, men with men, thieves, the greedy, drunks, slandered, and swindlers will not inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, we are in this world, but we are not what? Of this world. And see, understand this. When he's saying this is that we're going to have to live in this world, but we don't have to act like the world. We don't have to live in this place of suffering. We don't have to live in this place of doubting, but we got to just trust him through the process. Because thinking about this, when we're coming, we're in the, in the beginning of the last days. Many of us think the world is going to end, but we don't realize that it's really a new beginning. 
a new beginning of life because we talk about the eternity of heaven, but we don't think about the eternity of hell because we're going to have a decision to make. Do we want to live for God or we want to be in contempt? And see, contempt means you're going to be living in, a, in, in hell for the, all the days of your life because not only will you have a new body when you go to heaven, but you're going to have a new body when you go to hell. How I know that? Because the Bible tells us this. Because the Bible says that you're going to feel the wrath of Satan all the days of your life if you, if you choose to go there. But if you live for God, you're going to have everlasting life and peace. No sorrow, no pain. You're going to have all the food you want. You're going to have the biggest houses that you ever could think about, you're going to have these mansions, but we got a choice to make in this season. Daniel 12 and 2 says this, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting what? Contempt. Matthew 25 and 46 says this, And the wicked will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Revelation 20 and 15 says this, and if anyone's name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life, he will be thrown into the lake of fire. And you don't merely live life just to live it, but you live life to fulfill your purpose. You live life to fulfill your purpose. And see, this is, I want to I touch on this. The enemy uses your wounds to make you react and not be proactive. See, let me stop right here for a second. See, the enemy wants you to get in a place where you're reactive instead of proactive. And what he does, he continues to plot these thoughts in your mind to make you think that I cannot progress. To make you think there's another way out. But no, there's no, it's only one way to Jesus. You cannot get to the Father but by what? His Son. But many of us, we walk around all of Jesus and get all the success and fame. And it looks like they're doing good, but in reality, they're going to contempt. But I want you to understand is that we have a decision to make because as Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we got a responsibility in the earth to give him back what he gave us. He gave us life. And we shouldn't here be acting like that because of him that we don't even have to give God back what he needs to do. And to, clo and, and to come to a close is this. But by his stripes... But by his stripes, mm -mm -mm. I'm going to leave y'all off on a high note today. We ain't going to do it like that. But by his stripes, you are what? You are healed. And if God says you healed, you don't need an angel to remind you that you are coming into this place. But many of us, we're looking for every prophet in the world, but you don't realize that you can prophesy to yourself. You don't need your pastor to keep reminding you of what God told you in one season. All you got to do is just remember his word and keep pushing. And see, Jesus didn't come to the world to multiply, but he, ooh, he didn't come to satisfy, but he came to what? To multiply. See, the woman at the well, she didn't know Jesus, but Jesus met her talking like brother and sister. And when he got the talking to her, not only did she get revelation, but she went back into her village and brought what? Multitudes back to him. What are you going to do in this season? Are you going to sit here and not multiply what God has already given you? Think about the story of Jesus with the five loaves and the two fish. Hey, listen now. He told the disciples to send them all in groups of 50. But then when he got to a place, he said, I'm going to show you something. And all he did was what? Look up to the heavens because his father already knew that he was already in alignment. How many of you need to get back in alignment with the king in this season? He didn't have to say a word. All he had to do was just look up and his father multiplied what was in his hands. But many of us, we're walking down with our head down, worried about what the naysayers are going to say, worrying about what the enemy is planning to get you, not worrying about what your healing that's coming in place. You're worrying about how you're going to pay your rent. You're worrying about if my car's going to crank up the next day. You're not worried about my co santa You're worried about your husband if he's going to get it right. You're worried about your wife. But I'm telling you now, the word tells us to cast your cares upon the Lord. And you got to understand that in this hour, there's nothing that should stop you from praising your God. Repeat after me. Stand on your feet. I want you to recite this. And I want you to say this with all you got. And it says, he took beatings. 
Come on, repeat after me. He took beatings, but he got up. He was doubted, but he got up. He was hated. He bled. He sacrificed. Listen, you got to understand that as he did the unthinkable, you got to know that God is getting ready to shift the very nature of your life. The multitude is coming to your house. You got to understand that you got to prepare yourself for it. You can't sit here and just wait for the enemy to plot against you because the enemy is trying to keep the church and send them back to the pits of hell. But I want you to understand that in this region, we got to begin to decree and declare that this is my season of breakthrough. Come on, y'all don't believe it. I need to hear y'all voices. Come on, you need to praise your God right now. He didn't die on carry you for you to sit here and act like you don't got a, a sound in your belly. Come on now. I need to hear his voice. Come on, worship him. There's some things that got to be broken off. I'm telling you now, this is your hour. Don't miss the window. Don't miss the window. Come on, there's something that needs to happen in this place today. Come on, walk around with three people and tell them this is my new season. Come on, shake your hands and tell them this is my new season. This is my new hour. This is my new day. I'm getting ready for my new. I'm walking in what God has promised me. Come on, let your friend know. Spread the anointing out. There's nothing like the body of believers coming to the girl that in agreeing is what God is getting ready to do. Maseta. Sikata baba kosete na daba kosanta. Ita ma kosanta. Lebe baba kosita ma baba santa. I thank you, Father. Da 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 baba kosita. Come on now, da 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 baba kosita. He said, if you just lift your hands up right now and just give me your praise, I'm getting ready to do something supernatural. Just like when the people doubted that he rose out of the grave, God said the same thing is getting ready to happen to you. Ma baba kosanta. My mama soto didi kasata. Lebo wo kosita. Kama masita ta ta baba kosata. Hmm. Ta baba kosata. Hear you, Father. Lebo wo kosi. Ta baba kosata. Hmm. Kata baba kosita ta ta baba sata. Didi kosata. I hear the Father saying that this is the hour. That things are not going to make sense, what you're about to see in the earth. Mama Soto. And he says that's why he declared that this is the season of kingdom advancement. Because you're going to see some things happen as you already have saw in the earth. He says the church is going to get judged even more greater. Kata Mama but God says in the midst that those that were trusted in prior seasons, they're about to see even greater, even greater blessings going to hit their homes. If you not, have not been faithful with the little he's given you in prior seasons, God says you're going to miss the wave of his glory in this season. Because many of you have been asking him for promises. He says, I'm going to give the answer to the promise. I'm going to sow back into what you have done. But God says that this increase that you're about to see, it's not just for you. Because the enemy is trying to take resources out of the church, which is the people of God. But he's going to restore it with people that he can trust. Listen to me good. He's going to restore it with the people that he can trust. And if he can trust you in this season... Your house is about to shift. I see homes that were broken. But God says he's getting ready to heal them. Because there's a great work that the kingdom has to do. God says that even the minds of people have been in a low, desolate place. But God says he's about to heal you. Some of the diseases that some people have in their bodies in this season. It's attached to how their mind is set up. 
Baba He says, I'm about to heal your mind first. And everything that must come to alignment. Baba Heart conditions are going to be healed. Lung damages are going to be healed. Baba Come on, if this is for you, you need to get on your feet right now. Baba He said, the lack of resources are getting ready to be elevated. He says his Ruach is about to come on ministries and businesses. And you're going to see. Oh, Jesus. He says there's an earthquake that's going to hit this. There's an earthquake that's going to hit this country. He says, I'm going to send it. It's not going to. It's going to. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. It's going to be one like we've never seen before. Not only would it hit. St- he said the remnant of it will be felt across this country. But he said it's going to be a reminder of who the true king is in this. In this country. Because the enemy has had control of your mind. Of the people of God for too long. But God says you can ready to see some things happen. And do not be alarmed because in the midst of it, you're going to be greatly blessed. God says, as fast as he lifts people up in this season, if you get out of character, he's going to bring you down. This blessing is going to come with humility. You got to be humble upon the Lord and you cannot discredit the people around you. I hear this very clearly. Watch your mouths in this season because what you speak it will come back quicker. It's not going to take decades for what you, what you sow, you will reap back quickly. If you sow negativity, you're going to see negativity in your life. But if you sow anything positive, you're going to see it be multiplied. If this is for you, I needed to have a shout in this place. Let God know that you're here. Come on, I thank you, Father, for what you're doing today. Only you can come through. Only you can have your way in this earth. I pray that every vessel in this place today will be reminded, Father, that you rose on the third day. That you are the everlasting king. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the king of kings. You are El Shaddai. You are the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the creator of all things in the earth. And that your spirit dwells amongst them. That as a revival is getting ready to hit people in their homes, that it will bow down to you and no other God. This is a new beginning for your people. A beginning like never before. We're in the beginning of the last days, but we're in the beginning of a new way of life. As you entrust your people with more, Father, give them wisdom beyond their years. Give them understanding beyond the days and clarity that will be supernaturally given through their eyes. I pray, Father, in an astounding increase of discernment as the enemy sets up plots that your children will see it. That as your enemy get, as your people be elevated into the kingdom, that they will have eyes to see and ears to hear. That even the sign of them shifting, that you will touch their minds and their bodies and impart into them new gifts. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those who speak in tongues, who interpret tongues, those who have the gift of prophecy. Those who have the gift of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. Those who have gift of discernment, Father God. Gifts of faith. Let the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit dwell amongst your people. And let the fivefold ministry be established in this church. Because there's a greater work, Father, that is coming forth in Revealed Church Worship Center. That I submit to you, Father, that it will be done in the earth. If you need a quick prayer right now, if you don't know Jesus, this is your opportunity. As we come to a close, if you don't know Jesus, this is your time now. The worst thing you could do if you don't know him 
that you miss an opportunity to dwell with him. There's something about the goodness of his presence that no man can give you. Only he can do this for you. That no woman can do. Only he can do this for you. Baba Kosenta. If you don't know him, this is your opportunity. Because he loves you. He wants more from you. Baba Kosenta. Let his spirit dwell amongst you. There's someone that's been tested this week. That you've been crying and weeping. I hear and I see it clearly. That you need a prayer to remove whatever tormenting demons that's been around you. There's only one that I see. This is your time to be obedient. That you've been lacking clarity. And there's been a door, a portal that's been opened that needs to be closed. This is your opportunity. You don't have to live this way. Hey, Josh, come for it, brother. If there's not anyone else, give me your hand. The Lord told me to lay favor upon you for prosperity in this season. He wants to multiply you. And the enemy has been holding back what God has promised you. This is your time of acceleration. Not just physically, but spiritually. That your eyes shall open in this season. That your ears will be open in this season. That people will see the gift in you. That you will be able to receive resources from unprecedented places. This is your season of the unordinary blessings. It's in Jesus' name that something must shift in your life. Father, right now, I pray this blessing upon your servant. That, Father, as I touch his hand, that will be an impartation of favor that will come amongst them right now in the name of Jesus. That clarity will hit his mind, Father. That you will send help his way. That even the education that he's getting ready to attain, that it will be a tool for expansion, Father God. I see this center, this vision of you standing at the door and you just beating it. You're beating it, weeping and crying, saying, Father, when is it going to open? But God says, I need you to hit it one more time. He said, when you hit it this time, God says the floodgates of heaven is going to open up upon you. God says there's new vision that's about to be birthed in you. Because God says what he has in store for you that no man can take. Even in your adolescence, you didn't get the provision that you needed as a child. Mm. But God says, I'm going to send you kingdom men to replace what's been lost. Because you know you have something very different in you, but you don't know how to yet tap into it. But God says, you don't got to tap no more. Just open the doorknob one last time. I need you to turn around three times to decree and declare that, Father, this is my season of breakthrough. Because there's something on the brinks of happening in your life. Get ready. Turn around three times for the Lord. Come on, one. Three, God says, get it ready because this is it. You're going to see it. The enemy going to bring oppression, but you will deliver. You will see your way through it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See, is this your parents, mother, sister? I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. 
I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for what you taught. I hear the word delayed for you, the hands I'm holding right now. God says so much has been delayed over your life. It's like you've been yearning out of curiosity more of Jesus. And God says you even thought about tapping into some things that's not of his kingdom. But God says he stopped it right before it happened. Mama Cosenta, you have been Mama Cosenta. You feel like that you are not enough, that no one sees you. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. That no one sees you. But God says he sees you today. You don't need to be clarified or justified by man. But God says everything that you have in your heart to birth out in this season, God says you got to do it and forget about what people thought. Because it's not in the thoughts that things happen. It's in you trusting in him. Because even the people that spoke against you, that some you have heard recently. Ah, but God says this is not your hour to worry about them. God says he's going to use it as a, as a platform of expansion. Some of these same people are going to come back to you and say how. Hey, put your hands on her head right now so that the enemy, I'm going to pray over your mind. Father, you have not given her the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And this is her season, Father God, that you will renew her mind. That every demonic plot against her thoughts, that we send it back to the pits of hell. That every word that's sent to her by, as a curse, that you will make it a blessing right now. That the enemy will flee from her mind. That it will be renewed at your name, Father. That every day, that every witch that tried to come against her, that everything they spoke against her will come back to them. Fill her with your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. That she will experience in you, Father God. That she will do exploits in this earth. That no man can call out who she is, Father. Because it's been too long that she's been tormented in her mind. God says, even this low desolate place that you're in right now, God says, he's going to renew everything that's under the feet of you. That your foundation will be more stronger in this season. Because it's going to be in me. God says, that he will send people to help you. To, to speak life into your vessel. God says, you're not not gonna lack he said that's just the the thoughts of the enemy but right now the spirit of God gonna come upon you lift your hands up lift them up mm. father right now let your fire come amongst her that your glory will come amongst her that she will be renewed father that every tear she's crying right now is this is just confirmation father of what she's been experiencing father right now fill her up your spirit. Fill her with your spirit, Father. That nothing will come against her. Even tonight when she lays down, you haven't been getting rest. He got so that peace will come amongst you. You're going to have a night. It's going to seem like you're not going to get rest. But it's going to be the peace of God. He's going to sleep with you. He's going to reveal himself to you. And when you get through it tonight, your days will not be the same anymore. And the last thing, where's your mother? Is your mother? Oh, Jesus. Mm. Mm. If you only knew what she prays for you in the spirit. Oh, Jesus. Because the enemy wanted to kill you. But if it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here today. Her prayers have broke barriers that you don't even understand. God is getting ready to do something in you. You can see things. You are a seer in the kingdom. And what he's getting ready to do for you, he's getting ready to elevate you to new heights in the kingdom. Mm. Has anybody ever told you that you have a prophetic gift? Never. Hmm. 
But today, God's going to begin to use you in your dreams. And you're going to be able to see some things. Mm. He's going to expand you. It's going to be uncomfortable. But it's going to expand you because this is not traditional for you. It's untraditional for you. But I want you to know this, that even right now, there's some doubts about which to do next. Mm. That even the doubts that you have, God says he's getting ready to show you some clarity in your mind. God says, all you got to do, if you can just trust him, because you asked him, saying, Father, how do I get here? What is the next step? But God says he's not going to give you the next thing until you make the first step. There's so much been held up with simply just a step. And when you take this step, the floodgates of clarity is going to come amongst you. God says, don't you turn around and give up on what he's promised you. God says, don't let age be a factor. Because what you get ready to walk into, God says, I see this multitude of women, before I close it with you, that is waiting on you. Because the things you experience from your adolescence and up now to your adulthood, these women need it. But God says he's going to give you clarity. He's giving you provision. The only thing is stopping you from getting the floodgates open for you is just you taking the first step. The resources won't come until you bust a move. But you already got the plans. Just do it. Father, I thank you right now that as she gets another enough courage to move forward in your glory, that the grace that's around her will be used, Father God. Let her be obedient to your will, Father. It's not up to her to understand, but it's up to her to be obedient to your will. That something is coming her way once she's taken a step out on faith. And I decree and declare, Father, that right now in the name of Jesus, that she will begin to must move this week, Father God. As she enters into this new beginning, of, that she will get ready to see money flood her hands, Father, as she becomes obedient to you, as she builds to you, Father God. And over the next several years, that she will look back upon this day, and she will be reminded of your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hey, would you guys pray over her? We got to get out of here. So, Father, I thank you right now, as y'all stand on your feet, that you send provision their way. That you send your hedge of protection amongst everyone in this body today. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. That everything that's spoken upon your people today will be done. That they will leave here renewed and transformed. That this is a new beginning on a new journey for all of us. And it's your son that died on the cross for Calvary for our sins. That we give homage to you today. That we will not lack, Father, because your blood has already done the finished work. We thank you. And it's in your son, Jesus, we all pray. Everybody in the building say amen, amen, and amen.